Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Bellum of Mutants and Men. In the game Bellum, it plays two players. It is about half an hour to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. And in the game, you're going to be playing as either the Sapiens or the Gobelos, which are basically like the goblins and the humans. You're going to basically be getting a 5x5 five five square grid, and it's a tactic style game. You're going to be drawing a card on your turn, have a card of five hand, have a hand of about four to five cards um, to start, and you you play cards down based on the equivalent of cards in your hand and of course there's also going to be a stockpile of points as well as your keep points. The objective is pretty simple. The goblins want to expand their territories because they have an ever-growing horde of things going on and the humans want to uh, increase the lands promised to their uh, to their, I guess, uh, subservience, so they're trying to like branch out. And they're going to try to defeat each other's keeps. So each keep is about 10 HP, and you're going to be sending your units to destroy the other person's keep. If you can do that, you're going to win the game. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let me go ahead and show you what the contents are. So here we have Bellum of Mutants and Men, and everything that you're going to be getting in the game. First of all, you're going to be getting a box. Um, this is a production prototype copy, so it's not going to be the production. Uh, so you expect things to be changing. This is a 5x5 five five grid, and of course the two keeps, one for each side. This is the spawning point for each of the different armies as well. You're also going to be getting two separate decks, one for the Gobelos and one for the Sapien army. You will be getting cards for your uh, main deck and of course your discard area, along with reserves, such as the Gobelos, and they're going to be having the ability to spawn spawnlings. Uh, you're also going to be getting these little point trackers. This is stockpile points and is what you're going to be using in order to um, spawn cards. And your stockpile is going to be based on the number of cards in your hand at the start of the turn. So if you have six cards at the start of your turn, you're going to have six, six stockpile points that you can go ahead and spend on your turn, as well as whatever is remaining on your opponent's turn. And your keep is basically going to have 10 HP points. So once this hits zero, you're going to lose. Players are going to be playing cards on the board, moving back and forth trying to destroy each other's keep and that's basically what you're gonna get in the game of Bellum. Let's talk about how you play a turn and what cards you can use. So at the start of the game you're going to be getting four cards in your hand and you're going to draw a card at the start of every turn. After you've drawn your card you're then going to look at your stockpile cards which will have the stockpile points as well as the keep points and you'll put your little marker on the indicated spot of how many cards you have. So if you have five cards you're gonna put this on five, six, seven, so on and so forth. And that's basically the amount of uh, resources you'll be able to use throughout the turn. Once you've gone ahead and done that, you can look at your hand. Now, each one of the cards is going to have a cost on them. Like the Expert Farmer, you're going to tell you the top left-hand corner of the card, the cost, which is going to be one. And then if you turn it to the side, you'll see over here that you have your uh, how much damage he does, how much defense he has, how many actions he has, and his range, along with a potential... Uh, or action and or ability. BOT means beginning of turn and EOT means end of turn along with of course what he is um, and what type of person he is and of course the artwork on the card. So after uh, you go ahead and decide what you want to play you're going to go ahead and set it down on the board which is going to be setting down on the little keep space that's where you're going to be spawning your units and then as soon as you spawn them you can actually go ahead and move them. There's no problem with doing that and you can use the actions. Your actions are pretty simple. You can either choose to use an action that's on the card if there is one. You can choose to use an action as an moving and an action as an attacking. If you don't want to move and you have two actions on the card, you can attack twice. However, a ranged action, this is a possibility for ranged, if it has a two or more range, you'll only be able to use one range attack per character per turn. Uh, there's also a special abilities that you can be drawing from your, into your hand, like Adrenaline Boost or Can of Peaches. This one specifically for the humans is going to give a plus one plus one counter on a uh, creature as a tactic, and uh, it's basically something you can just play. Bam, it's a 3-3, three, three. nope, now it's a 4-4. Four, four. Or Adrenaline Boost, it makes it a 2-2, two, two, but just until end, uh, it gives you plus two plus two, but only until end of turn. Combat's pretty simple. Your attack to their defense, their attack to your defense, presuming they don't die, um, and the creatures can kill each other, basically. If I do two damage to your defense, and you do two damage to my defense, and we both have two defense, they, they, they'll kill each other. And there's gonna be certain cards that are gonna have different abilities on them. Like, for instance, this one says, whenever an allied sapien defeats an enemy, you can pay one of your stockpile points and draw a card. That's pretty nice, right? Or, uh, by beginning of the turn, if this unit is adjacent uh, to an allied soldier, you can draw a card. So there's different ways to draw cards, and drawing cards is important because that is what's going to uh, facilitate how much mana and or resources and or, uh, you know, things you can use to spend uh, on your turn, as well as off your turn if you save anything. Now, stockpile points do not accumulate, uh, so after you, if you have five cards, you have your five resources, and you spend three, you'll have two left over until your next turn where you draw a card, and then you're going to 
not add, just just change it to whatever it is. So if it's six cards, you just put it to six. If you had three, you don't get to go up to nine. You just go to six. And that's the basic idea. You'll be moving around the board tactically, attacking your opponent's keep. If you can do that, you can win. Let me show you a couple turns of play. It's pretty simple. Bellum. So back to the board, and of course I went ahead and set it up. We're going to put these to the side, put your health uh, for keep over here at 10, and give everybody, both players, four cards. And of course, the spawnlings will in the reserve, and these are all basically tokens you can use to put on your cards. Mainly going to be used for the humans, though. All right, so the first player, who is the, uh, the, 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 uh, Goblins or the Gobelos is going to look at their hand. They're going to get to draw a card and then they're going to add the total of their cards and put the stockpile points to that total. And then they can choose to start spending. This one here is going to cost six, so they cannot use this one here. This one's going to cost one. This one is going to cost two, three, and one. And you can go ahead and read them too and see what they do. This one says uh, if this guy is sacrificed, you can add uh, two stockpile points to you on, on, the, on, your on your stockpile that turn. That's pretty useful, right? And only cost one. Uh, this guy over here is for three and says for one action which is one of these feet here create a spawn link that is available in adjacent space so that would be, probably be a good one but however on your first turn maybe not so much because you, you play that guy and if you chose to play a, a spawn link for one action then your space would be frozen up so maybe you don't want to do that let's go ahead and just go ahead and play this guy right here so it's going to cost us two so we'll go from five to three and we're setting it to the side here so that you can see the artwork and everything the cost is just going to be over here so now we got two attack one defense three actions and a one range and when he's defeated or sacrificed create a spawn link in an adjacent available space that's pretty sweet right so we'll go ahead and move one and maybe we'll move two spaces we won't go for that third one though we're gonna go ahead and be a more defensive here and if we want we can play some more stuff let's go ahead and put this guy down here if he sacrificed you get to add to the stockpile so we'll go just like that and uh, we'll go ahead and move as well one two and maybe three there and the rest of these guys let's go ahead and just save these for the next turn these guys over here the humans have got four they're gonna go ahead and drop to five move in this to here and they're going to then select their stuff they've got their tactics to save for later and uh, they've got their farm Armor. He's pretty useful, right? So we'll play him down. That's only going to cost us one. And then we're going to move him aside. If he's actually adjacent to four empty spaces, one, two, three, and four, if this was a space, he would actually be able to have us draw cards. This one is a nice one, too. It says whenever an allied sapien defeats an enemy, you get to draw one. And this one's the sergeant, which says at the beginning of this turn, um, if, adjacent unit, if there's an adjacent allied unit that is a soldier, you can draw a card. He'll play this one for three, one, two, and three, leaving one left. Uh, then we'll go ahead and move. That's one action to move. And and then one action you can use to attack if you want. Um, uh, so he can do that. So he'll actually send his attack to defense and his attack will go to his defense. And these guys will end up killing each other because two goes to two and two goes to one. And thusly removing these guys from play. Um, and that, that's, you know, that, that happens on occasion. This guy would be nice to have played first, but I didn't have enough uh, stockpile points because this is whenever an allied sapien defeats an enemy, you can pay one of these guys here and then you can go ahead and gain uh, one card into your hand. So these guys would go, you put them in your discard pile or your graveyard area. Yeah. And uh, he's still got a turn left. He still can do stuff. Maybe he wants to save these. Or, in fact, what he could have done, too, which would have been really nice, is if they were both still on the board here, 2-2 two, two to a 2-1, I could spend one for this tactic, which gives him a plus one, plus one token, thusly making him a 3-3, three, three, and this guy just a 2-1. So two goes to three, and two, three goes to one, thusly this, this guy would die. Also note, it says when he's defeated or sacrificed, he's going to allow you can spawn a spawnling in adjacent space. Spawnlings are basically just a one attack, one defense, defense with one action and one range and they have swarm you can play more than one of these normally you can only play one of each type or each each named unit on the board but spawnlings have a special ability where you don't have to acknowledge that rule after that this player is going to be done so we'll just say he did that because yeah, that's probably a better move right and then the next player is going to get to he'll draw a card he'll go ahead and move his stockpile points to four because he has four cards in hand and then he's going to go ahead and play something what's he want to play how about this guy right here that's three attack one defense one action Action, and he, for one action, he can create an avail, uh, a spawnling in available space. So he will go ahead and spend three. He'll spend the extra one and spawn an additional spawnling. Spawnlings are very useful because there's certain cards in the game that will do certain things. So for instance, let's see if we have any in here. Uh, he can be fielded to spaces adjacent to a blue brood matron. That's not very useful for this. Um, 
Is there anything in here? Oh, oh here, all allied spawnlings have a uh, plus one action. So that's pretty sweet. And at the beginning of a turn, feel the spawnling proxy to an available space adjacent to this specific character. So it makes them stronger. And they also can make them faster, making them get more actions. Um, also, you know, all, all these kind of good things with spawnlings that focus with these Gobolos guys, right? And he has no more actions left. He can simply choose to move things if he wants. Now remember, these guys only have one action, so they can't move and attack. They can only simply move. So maybe doing something like this is important. Um, and he already used his action to create one of these guys and this guy can try and weasel around one two and then they can be done here and then it's the next player's turn and you're going to keep going like that now that's the basic idea of the game i think you got a pretty good idea of it the last thing you need to know is that when you're adjacent to a keep or if you have a ranged ability so for instance this guy here has a ranged ability which means he can shoot two now you cannot attack back on a range ability if you're melee like this guy here but if you both had a range ability then you both then there would be an attack back if there if you both didn't have a ranged ability then of course the person who did would actually be the one attacking um, if a melee attack to range, a range will be able to attack back. So that's important to note there. And also to attack, it's pretty simple. So uh, this guy here, if it was if it was still this guy's turn and he had an extra action, he could just ping that once and lower the uh, keep HP points and you know to slowly reduce them down to zero, which is basically the objective of each player. And the way you can tell your cards apart from everybody else's is, of course, the way they are positioned, right? So normally these guys are going to be positioned like this and these guys will be positioned this way. That way players can usually tell. But for the sake of you guys, that's what I'm, I'm showing you like this. Um, um, and that's the idea, right? So you're gonna be able to draw different cards. This one's very, this one's very useful whenever an allied uh, sapien defeats an opponent. So I'd play that. This I only have three cards total in hand, so I'd play that. That cost me my two. This guy could move over here. This guy would kill this guy. When this guy dies, I can spend one, and thusly allowing me to draw an additional card. And cards are very good because it's gonna give you more stockpile points and also the ability to play more cards onto the field. Each of the decks have their different varieties as how that how that can happen. And uh, of course, we want to move this guy up here. And hopefully, he'll stay there because the next turn, if all four of these spaces are 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 empty, then he's going to score. But realistically, on this guy's turn, he's just gonna simply um, well, actually, he could do that he can only move he couldn't attack there but he's gonna try and kill this guy it's very important to nuke this guy down so we get the idea right so that is the basic idea of bellum of mutants and men the first person to reduce their opponent's key points to ooh, 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 zero is going to be the winner let's talk about it so a couple caveats before they start the review uh well or one actually just at the end of your turn discard down to six of course you can score uh, you could have more simply by uh, getting up to 10 on your turn of cards, but the end, of course, you're going to go down, so that way it kind of keeps up the field a little more balanced. Uh, otherwise, though, there are certain cards that go with certain types of factions, right? So first of all, you're going to have the pluses and the end of turn bonuses, uh, such as or such as like the Adrenaline Rush. This is a plus two, plus two. It's mainly for Sapiens. There's nothing that you can do for the Gobolos. However, Spawnlings are for them, and they all have their own unique abilities that kind of intertwine with Spawnlings. It's very important to have these guys on the field, just all over the place. So thusly, they can get bigger and scarier. They have more actions and whatnot, and you can utilize them very, very strong. Very, very, very... Um, Oh, I don't eat strategically. Not only that, though, but the humans have this nice little, like, ha, you thought you were going to get me with your spawnlings? No, I play plus one, plus one, and thusly it cripples them. Uh, that being said, now the review. First of all, in this game, it reminds me of Heroes of Karth and Eternal Kings. Both of those games are kind of use like a grid-like combat system. They have their own unique way of, uh, one has no resources and one has resources. And this one uses their ha hand as resources, which is kind of interesting. You kind of want to keep cards in your hand so you can play more cards. But you also don't want to get bombarded by your opponent at the same time. So it keeps the game level for, for the most part. Uh, I have played this game quite a few times, and I played as the Sapiens. My opponent played as the uh, Gobolos. Gobolos want to use strategies that involve uh, spawning all over the board, making their spawnlings stronger, and of course sacrificing their creatures to make more of them, destroying the keep as fast as they possibly can. And the humans like to use these take that things when you're ne never expecting them. Um, and it has this tactical strategic, strategic depth, which is nice. I also like the fact that it's all in black and white, and it feels kind of kind of dark. I'm not sure if it's going to be in color or not. This is a prototype, like I said, so uh, how, how this might all change, I am not sure. You'd have to look at the campaign specifically, but the artwork is good. Solid. I really enjoyed the artwork, and the if you like tactical style card games, moving across a board or a grid, you're going to enjoy this. It reminds me of a phone game. This is something you could actually probably play or, or push together into one of those tactics, like such as like Fire Emblem tactics are going against each other. So it does work very well as, as far as that goes. Uh, throughout the game, what can happen uh, that I didn't notice, but my opponent did, was they started having less and less to do as I started to gain more and more momentum. When I had six, seven cards in my hand, 
uh, and he started running out to two and, and three, and he wasn't able to play as much, I, it started becoming a win more thing. And that can happen with these type of games. It can also happen with games like Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh! and that kind of stuff. Um, and this one is is no different in, in that nature. That, that can happen throughout these kind of games. Uh, there is a pushback, of course, where you can kind of have these strategic moments where you start playing random uh, abilities and whatnot, which is very, very nice and can help you definitely. There's also like stuff like Grenaders, which is very nice too. You can blow up things around in a big circle so you can destroy multiple cards if you're very tactically enhanced in, in, in the membrane. Uh, Cull the Herd is also a very useful card if they have a very strong unit on the board. That's something that you can destroy them, but it has a huge cost. It's seven, which means uh, it costs one less for each unit your opponent has. So it's a way to kind of have a little catch up. Otherwise, though, other than the win more aspect, if you enjoy tactical style card games on a grid, moving back and forth, simplistic and easy to uh, to explain. And this is probably, probably it's gonna be like five minutes maybe to explain the game to somebody, and then we just get going at it. And it's uh, we, we finished a game anywhere from ten to fifteen to twenty minutes. Just it really depends on how quickly we're thinking and how much strategy we want to use in it. Overall, though, it's probably gonna be one of those games where you'll think it's good enough for you, or if it's if it's something you want to see, go ahead and check it out in the description below on Kickstarter. For me, it was a solid little. Uh, tactics game. I've seen better ones, I've seen worse ones, but overall I like it. I like the theme, I like the style, and I like the uh, com I like the tactical combat of nature as far as using, not only that, but using the cards in your hand as resources, which is very, very interesting and unique. Anyway, that is Bellum of, of Mutants and Humans. Go ahead and check out the description below, description below for Kickstart. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this game, don't forget to check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out Bellum currently in the description below. You can go ahead and check it out on Kickstarter. It'll either be out now or shortly in the future. Do go ahead and look it up. It does look cool. I really do enjoy the style of game, and it's one I can easily recommend to play over and over again. It's not one you'll probably get bored after the first game. You're going to want to play a second time, so that's pretty cool. Also, go ahead and check out my website, unfilteredgamer.com. Get into blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And don't forget to check out my friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. Two great sites that give a lot of content and a lot of uh, giveaways and all that kind of stuff, even more than my own site. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. As always, I look forward to being the humans and crushing you, Gobelos, next time.